Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today we are changing a consumer unit in preparation for uh, a potential extension that's going to be going on out of the back. So today the board is not staying in the same location so I'm going to be lowering it right down um, because I don't think the clients will mind me saying um, they're in their senior years should we say so at the present it is way up here right at the top of um of the room um so it's in the garage and we're going to lower it right down to a much more manageable height so there's no risk of uh, them having to go on steps and things like that if for a fault you know if a fault occurs um so if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed make sure you do so link is in one of the corners and if you enjoy the video make sure you give us a thumbs up and uh, yeah I'm gonna take you around and show you what the setup is right now. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the consumer unit above our head. It's the original one for the house. Uh, okay, so also what they've had is they've had PV fitted at some stage and also um, there's the, somebody else has put in a new um, water heater um, badly. So what I'm going to do, it's going to drop all that lot down. So the consumer unit is going to sit around about here somewhere. Um, so we are going to have to faff about a little bit with the meter, I believe, uh, and definitely the isolator for the solar. Um, so we're fitting a fuse box board today. It's a 20 way that's going in. Um, so we're going to be fitting that little bad boy up. Um, we're also going to be putting it in so some trunking. So we're dropping all those down uh, in a little bit of trunking. So the idea is that at the top, we're going to be fitting uh, an adaptable box. At the top, we're going to run that down and then obviously mount that into the consumer unit. So the meter cupboard, I'm going to show you that now, is literally, so I'm just coming through the, the garage now, so the meter cupboard's here, so it couldn't really be any easier really on, on that side of things. Um, so yeah, lovely house, really, really nice house, lovely people to work for, it's just, I need to get cracking, because I've got an appointment today that I need to keep. So let's get that all opened up and I'll show you what it's like inside. Okay, it's important to also say, that the customers have made me a cup of tea. A good cup of tea as well, so thank you very much for that. So we've also got a mains isolator on the other side of the wall, so which has been fitted from, from basically new. So it's a fairly, it was a new estate in the, I don't know, 90s, something like that. That's how old roughly it is. Well, in fact, it was actually installed in 1995, this board, so that's when, when it was uh, first installed. Okay, so obviously we've proved that it's dead. Um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so as you can see, you've got, so this here, let me zoom out, sorry. So this here is your isolated view PV, um, and you can see the newer installs which are, which are here. So these two are the PV, and there's, so it's these two, and this solar, um, it's a PV is solar and the water heater, sorry. So this is how they've been put in, absolutely ridiculous. So put in like that and then it's like he's run out of sleeving and gone no oh, whatever I'll just mix and match whatever so God knows what the other end of it's like um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label all these up strip it all out get that gone get this out of the way and drop drop the cover off this drop it all down so I think I'm going to mount the board here above this now I think that's where I'm going to go uh, mount it above and uh, yeah, extend the cables down. So as you can see, I am on um, some steps. So if you imagine, if you're a little bit unsteady on your feet, why would you want to be on standing on top of there to then turn that, obviously reset it or whatever. Um, so it needs to be down there, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Okay, so I thought I'd bring you in a little bit closer. Um, <laughs> so this is your solar guys uh, that have done this. So no sleeving on the CPCs. Um, this one, which they'd put in as well, so it's a mix and match of cut and shut um, for, for all their sleeving, really weird. 
and then what they've done, rather than using, you know, twin and skin, and then I've got another joint here, it's another joint there, why? Um, and then not only that, is it they've then skagged, let's try and move that down there, they've then skagged the actual um, sheathing on the meter tails. So well done boys, really first class effort. So it does worry me on what uh, standard we're, we're working to on these uh, solar guys, so I'm glad that's being moved now. What we, what the plan is anyway, is I've mounted the board up here, okay? So it's a, it's a manageable height. I haven't got to get into steps or anything like that. Um, so I've man, made it on some um, some galvanized couplers. So I've got it on there to stand it off. So the idea is that then I can bring everything in through rear entry and have it, um, some trunking coming down. Because what I'm gonna have to do is on this piece, cut a slice in the top and then obviously a slice in the bottom to match uh, the trunking coming down. Bringing all the cables in below, um, yeah, and then we've got to get the rotary isolator on somewhere else as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's why I've done it this way because it's a nice, nice and easier job to do it. I've also used some white um, edging strip. Okay, so you can get it from one of those retailers that delivers literally next day. If you know what I'm saying? Um, I've gone for the white one this time. Got a little bit jazzy. Um, so. That's what I'm doing. I think it's worked out better for me this way. Um, and also knowing full well that there's, like I say, with the extension and new circuits going in, it's just a bit easier moving further forward, having it stood off the wall a little bit. Um, so I say it's completely solid, using different fixings as well now. Um, so this is an actual, um, it's a light ash sort of block. Um, so these are actually made by Fisher and they are ridiculously strong. They grab really, really well uh, into there. So it's not sponsored by them, it's just that I've tried it and, I, and I'm really impressed with them because these blocks are notorious, uh, thermalites, sorry. So these thermalites are an absolute pain for getting a decent fix in, but they seem to have you know, solved it for me. So what I'm gonna do is use the oscillator now, get that cut out at the top, uh, get the trunking out because I'm hopefully now that the trunking will slide just below the top surface uh, of the board and then that way it'll be a nicer finish again obviously and then I can start rattling all the RCBOs in. Um, so you might be wondering why I'm fitting this over a BG for example um, and purely the reason why is because I just couldn't get hold of one in time. My wholesaler had promised to get me one in uh, and they didn't and I needed it to, to happen straight away and they had one of these in stock. Um, but I, I, like I said, I'm not gonna move away completely from fuse box, but BG are wicked. They really, really are good. So like I say, they're on, if, you, if, you're, if you're fitting fuse box boards all the time and you haven't yet tried one of the BG Fortress boards, give it a whirl, honestly. It's really good, good stuff. Not being paid to say that either. Uh, it's generally completely off my own back, that is. Um, but it gives you another alternative because where, like I say, Hager are an extremely good good brand and great board. Um, but obviously when you fit in RCBOs, they can be a little bit pricey. Um, but then again, you pay for what you get, don't you? So like I say, completely three, they're my three board choices in fairness, is BG, Fusebox and Hager. Um, but I, not that often enough fit Hager now, just uh, on costing, that's all it is. Um, but yeah, enough waffle. Better get this cut out and uh, get cracking. Okay, so as we can see now, I've got my trunking in place. Um, so I've decided to go all the PV stuff on that side, because I think what I'm gonna do is bring the, the mains isolator down here. Um, so it's gonna be sort of this location, I think. Um, I'm gonna sort this mess out. Um, so the meter tail is gonna be coming through, through the back, through into here. I'm gonna use these existing ones, but obviously cut all the bad bit out of it. Um, get that in there. Then I'm gonna extend all those through and drop those down, but I'm absolutely starving. As anybody knows me, I normally have had my lunch by now um, and I haven't had it yet. And I'm very, very hungry and very hungry, very hungry. And I've got to eat it. So that's what I'm doing. I just had my lunch and just have a little moan about the internet. Um, it's rubbish around here. We're in the center of Coventry. How is it rubbish? But anyway, enough said. Um, 
Oh, they knocked you over. Um, so basically what we've got now, so we're at a stage now where I've put all the RCBOs in. Let's be honest, we've all seen it. You know, point me, you know, keep going over and over and over it again. So put my RCBO over on the left hand side, fix my flying lead up and then dress down the back. That's how I do it. That's how I've always done it. Um, like I say, there's loads of other videos. If you check out the rest of the, the you know, in the channel, there's, there's actually specific videos on how I go about dressing all the boards in. Um, so go and check them out if you haven't done already. Um, so what I'm going to do now is start extending all the cables. So what you can you can see up here, I've got um, I've got my mains earth in, earth, mains earth bonding in, uh, meter tails are in. I put the trunking down. So I've put another piece up here. So I've got my PV, the shower pump, both the gas and water bonding up here, uh, and also yeah, there's a shower pump, yeah, shower pump PV water heater over here um yeah bonding so i'm going to rattle through start start extending them all through um wiring them up as i'm going um the problem is what i've got right now is i am really really up against the cosh for my meeting later on so i need to really get flying so what i'm going to be using is some wagos you can get up there you can get a specific consumer unit um extension box um, but again I, I, we just haven't got time for, for ordering it. We needed to get on with this. Um, so we're going to wago it up. So we're going to wago it all up in the enclosure. Um, and yeah, so give me five minutes. So that's a split second for you, millisecond. Um, so we've got the majority of the house all wired back in to the board uh, and all extended. So what I've done is I've I've tried to loop it back, if, if that makes any sense. So all my connections are all at the top. I yes if you use the consumer unit extender kit yes it could be neater but I've even seen those as being a right pain I don't really see a different way of doing it um, but that is what what we've done right now so I need to fire seal all the top um, to make sure obviously we've got no transfer of of fire in that in that instance um, and then we've dressed in all in the bottom but I'll bring you in a closer look just so you can see all oh, the trunking lid on here so what I've done is that's what I was saying so I've swooped it down so it's not all completely tight um, so there's room to manoeuvre wherever I need to and then I've got to fire, fire seal all these move them out of the way and fire seal it and then the next job for me is to extend my um, oh, water and gas bonding and then get this lot all sorted but yeah it's a lot going on full disclosure um, I had to go off and do another job um, so we had all the power back on and ignoring the solar stuff because obviously I didn't get that finished and that was that's fine it is what it is and sometimes when you've got a, an emergency it just has to happen um, so hence the reason why I don't just carry a spare top in the old van it, was, uh, it is another day so today basically I've got to finish the job off which, which, which I should have done the other day but it's by the by so the idea is is that I've so obviously got our um, solar meter here, um, so we need to sort this this lot out and tidy it up as best we can. So I think the idea that I've got now is that I'm going to mount it on the side here, obviously leaving all these cables in place like that because that looks jazzy. Um, and try and tidy it up a little bit that way. Um, so I'm going to use a bit of Flexicon, I think, to get me up into the consumer unit up here. Um, and then this leg here, again, back in some Flexicon that we're going to run, run that back through. And that essentially is going to go into the outside of your meter there. Um, that way it should be a little bit neater, less disruption or I might even be able to tuck that one back down here and then through this way because I've already got that um, rather than having all it all broken up like that so that's my plan right now so I'm going to get on with that I'm going to get that mounted up and then finalize my testing um, they've got a couple of little tests to do um, also the clients said while I've been away there's a, a light switch that's gone faulty so so there's like a smart switch that's packed up now
So, yeah, so let's get that mounted up. <laughs> right, I've genuinely just, just this split second after pressing record, I've just undone this. So hopefully I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so, right. Hopefully you can see. So we're on, on the meter and I've just undone that. And yet again, this solar install has not been done great at all. So let me bring this in. So this is how it's been installed. So hopefully that focuses in okay. It's just rubbish. It really is bad. And I don't want to go too mad about it. It's just st stupid. I mean, they've not even doubled them over. I mean, like I said, there's bigger things in the world, problem-wise, but I mean, it's just not great. But I was at the installer show the other day and I was chatting to the NIC there and I'll, I'll be honest with you, like when you, when you actually see some of the installs that, that people do on solar, it's quite scary. You think, why? Now I don't know, I don't know whether it's a case of that you've got um, that they sub all the work out to other people and they just come in and just go, oh, well, no one's going in the loft, they're not going to see it, who cares, or what? But it it's, yeah, happens a lot, a real lot. So what I'm going to do anyway, I'm going to get this tidied up and we'll we'll jump back in in a second. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I always try and try and make a install better than what it was before, aesthetically as well as, as obviously electrically. Um, and also try and save money to the customer where you can. So, for example, like this uh, rotor isolator, there's nothing wrong with it, really. I, the way I'm doing it now means that I don't have to change it. So I've just put a blank um, grommet in the side. So blank in there. So what I'm going to do is then bring the cables through that into that trunking that was already there. Um, and then I'm just going to, like I say, I'm going to put a bit of FlexiCon in the top. So by doing it this way it means I haven't got to then replace the whole thing at another expense, like I say, to the customer that they don't need to spend and buy another another um, another isolator for the sake of it. And like I say, they've already paid for it once and there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. I just think that obviously if we can save money where, they've, where we can, we will do. Um, I do enjoy as well making it look better and think they could have done that. They had everything there. Um, but, you know, such is life, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, so I've drilled through at the minute. So let me try and turn that round to, to where we are now. So I've drilled through. Drill, I drill through. I've got my fixings in. Like I said before, I'm using these Fisher raw plugs that really, really hold really, really well on here. So I've then dressed my cable in this way into the meter um, put my trunking lid back on and now what I'm going to do is also is which is again is something that they didn't do before is I'm actually then going to continue my CPC on into the rest of the installation so Sorry, how could you say that again yes I will um, so something else that's that was again another another issue that they hadn't continued the CPC through the entire installation so Mind blowing. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do, I've got that, get that mounted up. Um, I've got to turn turn all the power off because I've got to then put my supply for the isolator back into the board. So we'll turn all that off and get that all sorted. So so yeah, so just just bear with me and I'll get that sorted because the clients at home and they need stuff to know. So I can't faff about too long having the power off. Um, so I'll get that sorted and then I'll show you on the inside, I think. Okay, so we've got the um, cable back into the board now. Um, so we've got all that sorted. We've got the rotary isolator on. Um, and I think, like I say, it's a lot better than what it was. So we used a bit of Copex coming up. That's gone all the way back to the, where the rear uh, knockout is. So that's going to obviously, so I've got a continuous path all the way up to there. Uh, yeah, just much better. So the, all that's left to do now is just get the get the cover on on this. And we'll get the cover back on and it's all taken care of. Then I've just got a few little tests to do. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it. So 
leave it with me I'll get it all all buttoned up i'll go and finish all my testing off i think there's some um dodgy sort of garden lighting uh garden pond supplies i think that i need to be looked at um but yeah so let's get this back on okay so i thought i'd just show you quickly into into the garden so basically the feed for the all the pond stuff and garden electrics, which has caused a few issues, is actually here. So it's wired in through a bit of flex that way, and then it goes underneath the patio, and then it's brought down, down the stones. And then what it's then done is run in a little bit of copex all the way down. Uh, it's run that way up into that control box over there. Let's have a little show you through that so it comes up into that control box and so i've took that off it looks very very gnarly in there it's got a lot of uh ingress things like that so it's not not the greatest it's also got um some signs of like burning out and stuff and then it leads off down down that way leads off behind all that lot then there's no copex whatsoever on all all that bit that leads out into another control box up there um so that one's worse than the first one so let me go up here so this one okay so this one has got more um stuffing glands underneath the bottom of it that's not had any cables in it whatsoever um the problem is with that then that is full of moisture and debris and all sorts of stuff and then we've got all the cables that are just run along there and there's potentially damage and stuff on that so not great so it's it's not try not to fall in the pond um not the greatest so what we've done for now is i've isolated it off um, but we've also sort of having a little conversation because we're in talks at the minute about doing an extension here. Um, so there's no point me ripping all that out if it's a case of where well, we're getting the diggers and all that sort of stuff, pond may go, all that sort of things. So, so yeah, so we're making those decisions as we're going um, rather than spending loads of money on it for now because that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? Um, so I'll quickly run through this now. So the board's all done and dusted, all finally tested up, labelled up, all ready to go. So I've just gone through with a client uh, about how to use all that, um, what happens in a fault condition, uh, all that sort of stuff. And if there is an issue, then obviously you can just give me a ring. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, there's a couple of little bits as well just to, to go over on here. So things like the bathroom lights, two of them are non-IP rated. Um, so we need to change those and come back. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be a nice little video to show giving the client another option um, because obviously they're senior um, is not having the board right up at the ceiling anymore so they don't have to go on any ladders anymore and they can just turn it off from there so hopefully you've enjoyed it and if you have make sure you've given us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so so many people who watch that watch the videos and, and don't subscribe don't get it you know but such is life thanks for watching take care see you later